Alright guys, last video we talked about suicide and depression. Now we're going to be talking about self-importance and self-love. Self-importance is what you show about yourself and the importance for yourself as an individual, as a person, as a functioning member of society, as they say. Self-importance to yourself is talking about your own uniqueness, your own traits, your own self-esteem, your own character, everything about yourself, which is and why it's important. A lot of times we like to compare ourselves to other people, and that's not necessarily bad, but when it comes to an individual level, it shows that we want to be the same as another person. We're not showing what's unique about us. We're not showing what traits we have different than another person, and that's not what we want to show. We want to show that we're just as important as another individual, another member, another person, another person of the same sex or sexual orientation, something that shows that not only have I brought this to the table, but I'm going this much further beyond what they're going through. Yes, sometimes we get lost in a lot of things that we compare ourselves as. Like a lot of people want to be about celebrities. They want to make so much money. They want to be as, as no, well known as this person. They look up to this person and that's fine. It's great to have a role model. But at the same time, make sure that you're continuing to work on yourself. If you're not continuing to work on yourself, you're not showing that me, myself, is important. You're not saying that you are important to yourself. You need to show that everything that you're doing is going to improve yourself from here to the next couple of years until you die. Everything needs to work center around you. When it centers around you, you're going to focus on the inside. I like to say there's three different parts of the body. Well, not three different parts of the body, but three different parts of you that you need to work on. The inside, the outside, and the outer spirit. When you're working on the inside, you're working on your mentality, your emotions, what makes you tick as a person. That's what you work on the inside. You work on the inside, you're making sure that you're keeping up your mentality, you're keeping up with your emotions. You're showing that, hey, when I get hurt, this is how I react, and this is how I can react better. You work on that. You work on your emotions. You're not letting everything bother you, and when it does bother you, you have a coping mechanism. You have something that's very proactive, not something that's reactive. Then you go on the outside. The outside is how you handle things physically in the outside world. When you handle it physically, this is when you come up to certain situations, you get hit with certain consequences, and you hit with certain obstacles, you handle it with the utmost talent that you will have possessed, the utmost things that you have acquired. Let's say you're going on a journey. <clears throat> no, we're not even going to say we're going on a journey. Let's say you're a treasurer, and you like to go, well, no, we're going to say you're a pirate. You like to go after the most unique treasure, right? If you go after the most unique treasure, you got to have a good crew. But most importantly, you are the captain of the ship. You got to make sure that you're steering the ship the right way. You got to make sure that you're strong as a captain. You're strong as a leader. You're strong independently. Because you can't have a crew full of misraps, well, full of misfits and riffraps, and you, the captain, don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to get there. You don't know how to do this. You don't know how to do that. That shows that this captain is being led by an unfit captain. That means someone else needs to take control of the ship. You don't want nobody to take control of your ship. Like a lot of people say, I'm the captain of my fate. Be the captain of your fate. Be the captain of your inside. Be the captain of your outside. Now, the outer spirit. The outer spirit is what people look at when they're looking at you. It shows that, a lot, that's why a lot of people say that you're going to have a lot of charisma. They have a lot of things that define them outside of just their physical qualities. When you work on yourself, in the sense of self-importance, you have a lot that you bring to the table. And then people start migrating to you, asking you, how do you feel? How, how did you do this? And... You get a good amount of people who come to you about certain issues about life. They start coming to you about their money issues, they start coming about their social issues. Because you are that type of person now that you're attracting more people to you and you're giving them something in return. Remember, don't give everybody too much of yourself as well. Because energy is a thing. Energy is not created nor destroyed. It's only transferred. So be careful how you treat everybody. And how much energy you're giving off when you help with them. Self-importance ordains that you need to make sure that you yourself is the most important piece of the puzzle. 
you are the most important piece because you make everything fit. You're the master key going to the master lock. Turn that key, uh, locks the door. You don't have that key, you can't unlock that lock. You are important. Make sure you know this. Now we're going to talk about self-love. Self-love is different than self-importance because self-importance, like I said, focuses on the three little certain pieces. Self-love is what you have going on in your emotional and mental self. Self-love is very important because a lot of people are insecure about a lot of things about themselves. They don't feel like they're fit for a lot of things. They stress about themselves. They look in every crook and cranny. They find something bad about themselves and they doubt what's going on in their life. It's hard to get into a certain mindset, to get in a certain positive perspective, to get in a certain outlook when you don't love yourself. Love yourself with all your might and all your heart, please. That is something that I've, that is a great quote that I've always heard. Love yourself with all your heart and all your might. Because when you don't love yourself, it leads to a lot of things that you can't handle. It hurts. It shows that you don't believe in yourself. It shows that you don't think you can do anything. It shows that anything that you're doing, you're going to knock. Because guess what? You're going to love yourself. When you love yourself, you're going to have this bright, and I mean this bright, bright light. And it shows, it's going to shine all over everyone you meet. Because guess what? You love yourself to the point where no matter what anyone says, no matter what anybody doubts, no matter what anybody says about you, you're going to keep going. Because you love yourself too much to stop. Self-love deals when you're looking at your body. When you're looking at your accomplishments, when you're looking at your success as what it is now, when you're looking at what your grades are if you go to school, looking at if you what you're looking at your paycheck when you get your pay from your job, when you're doing stuff on YouTube if you're a YouTuber or a musician, every track you put out you feel so good about it because you know you did your best. If you are a computer technician when you make your best piece of software. Anything, anyone, any place can make sure, well, can entitle you or ensure that you are doing your best to create a loving atmosphere for yourself. Self-love is so important because a lot of people don't want it. A lot of people don't see it. A lot of people are like, dang, well, this can happen, but I don't really care about it happening because you don't really love yourself to the point where you think you're the top dog in your mind. No, we don't even say you're the top dog. You don't even think that you are your greatest asset. You are your greatest asset because who's your most powerful enemy? Your most powerful enemy is yourself. To keep that from being yourself, you look at yourself, you smile, and you're like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create somebody 10 times better. I'm gonna create somebody who's not afraid. I'm gonna create somebody who's not okay. You're not going to care about the doubters. You're not going to care about what anyone says. You can take in constructive criticism. Constructive criticism only helps to make you better. But if something that's tearing you down, if it's an obstacle that you have to pass, if it's a person that is being toxic to you, if there's family that's being toxic to you, if there's a, a person that you just know you don't vibe with, that's when you have to have that self-love for yourself to say, like, hey, I have to separate myself from this component of my life until it's time. And even then, you don't even know when it's time because when something is taken out of your life, it's taken out for the reason. It's taken out for you to prosper. It's taken out for you to become something better than you already know. Love yourself. Show yourself that you're important. And make sure that you look at everything with these two traits. Especially... In this life that we live. Self-love and self-importance are really things that a lot of people need to work on. I personally need to work on self-love a lot more because I'm sometimes really doubting myself. I doubt what I can do. I doubt what I can accomplish. I look at my life and I'm like, well, it doesn't need to happen because I can't make it happen. Because they didn't make it happen. If they couldn't make it happen, why am I trying to make it happen? And that doesn't that shouldn't control your life. That shouldn't be something that you look at. That's not a component in the being that you are making or being that you are becoming. 
you will become who you want to be or you already are that person because you don't let certain things bother you. If you're the first to go to college, boom, let that be your greatest accomplishment at that moment. Let you smile about it. Let that be your self-accomplishment. If you are looking like, oh, okay, I'm a little 